My name is Sarah Hill Merriam, and I, I've got something to say about why we're all here today. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm sick of being told what our generation is and is not. In one moment, we're an inspiration to the nation, and the next, we're a bunch of mindless zombies. And before you know it, we're back to being those lazy kids who don't have a stake in what takes place in this town every day. <laughs> Don't have a stake. Don't have a stake. You tell that to the tens of thousands of young people who aren't able to pursue their dreams because we've yet to act on immigration reform. Don't have a stake. You tell that to a generation who is literally watching the Gulf drowning in oil because baby they drill. Don't have a stake. You tell that to the young couple who is being told that who they choose to love is something that we choose to legislate or to the young person who, try as they may, is unable to get a job in this market. Don't have a stake. Don't you dare tell me we don't have a stake. We have a stake in what takes place in this town every day. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being dismissed, and I'm sick of feeling frustrated. It's not a secret. It's not, not something I'm ashamed of. I am frustrated. But let me tell you something. I'm frustrated by our gridlock politics, and it's, it's, I mean, look at the shenanigans that qualify as our political process. I'm frustrated by the pace of progress, and I'm frustrated by the assumption that we need to set limitations on our ambitions, as if our history doesn't speak to our ability to self-correct and to confront our challenges with worthy solutions, with comprehensive solutions. I'm sick of being told that young people won't vote. Youth turnout has been increasing since 2000, and because we voted, we've seen historic legislation pass that would reform our health care system and our student lending system. Now, because we voted, because we wouldn't be ignored. Now, I know what you're thinking, and I'm thinking it too. We still haven't seen action on, on climate. We haven't seen action on immigration. We haven't actually stood by the notion of equality when it comes to the LGBT community. I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking it too. And I will tell you that I constantly struggle with the temptation to allow frustration to give way to discouragement, or even worse, to silence. The naysayers would have us believe that we're in over our heads, that maybe our ambitions were a little too audacious, that maybe our collective power is inadequate. We can believe them. We can adhere to what they say about us. Or we can stand up and fight back and say that we're not inadequate, Congress is inadequate, and we still have an opportunity to do something about it. We still have an opportunity to email and call and protest our elected officials on behalf of legislation we care about, bills that will literally, literally determine what our country looks like decades from now. We still have an opportunity to vote every time. There are midterm elections this fall, and contrary to what they say, I know that young people are going to vote. I know we're going to vote because we must vote, because there's too much at stake. And I know that what I'm saying to you all, you, you, you hear me, right? I'm not, I'm not saying anything that you don't know. Tell me, am I wrong? Are you with me on this? All right, so in addition to talking to our elected officials, in addition to going and voting, we also have an obligation to talk to our friends, and not just to our friends, but to our parents and our grandparents, because the issues are on our side. Our generation gets it. We get it. And so if we take those issues and stand by them and believe in them and advocate for them when it's inconvenient, when it's frustrating, together, then we're unstoppable. I know that I stand before a room full of leaders, not leaders five years from now, but leaders right now, who understand that our country is always, always counting on us to change it. It was this mentality, this belief, this willingness to kind of defy what, what they say about us that inspired Campus Progress to team up with the Huffington Post College to launch a national keynote contest. After 213,000 votes were cast by all of you, three young people were selected to come and address the conference today, and I am absolutely honored to present the first of our three keynote winners, please join me in welcoming Jamira Burley.